companies, for everybody, that that open innovation is just uh, well, it's just an additional element of the company's innovation management strategy. And then we talk a little bit about <coughs> about other things, uh, how to how to get people involved, how to in, in uh, how to organize communities, how to motivate people to participate. Um, but later on, we we, we close that, that cycle and get again. And once the students know what, well, or have, have, have at least a, uh, a, a very good idea, we hope, um, what open innovation is, what open innovation can mean, uh, then we, we close that again and say, okay, and how can firms embed that in their overall innovation strategy? So how is they, are they going to use that to complement what they're doing in their national, or in their, in their classic innovation? Um, I go on one specific module to, to show you how we, we do that, and um, that is, well, we, we, we have academic papers, we have managerial papers, and we have case studies. So, for example, this is the, this is the module on, on social product development. We have a managerial paper on, uh, on motivation and crowdsourcing. As you mentioned, science students have to read all those papers and case studies beforehand that we can discuss. Um, we have some manicure papers, much more applied. Uh, this is the quirky case where, where students learn how this uh, idea that communities evolved was really put into practice by this company and uh, learn about the success factors of those community-based uh, innovations. And <coughs> then we have a full case studies, which is on, uh, on local motors. Uh, some of you might know there are other great cases on open innovation available in the Harvard Business School. So you have, in this case, you have this well, this uh, community who built their own cars and then managed to well, to to sell sell them to again back to the, to the community and also to help them to design uh, <coughs> better cars for the for the future. Um, the that is pretty much all I want to talk about. So I'm not going to get a red card. Um, we also have other types of. Of lectures, we have we have lectures in, in the executive program where we uh, have definitely more applied focus. Um, we uh, we have <coughs> course in, in the leadership networks here in uh, uh, the UK in general UK. Um, there's maybe one thing I want, wanted to add to, to your first lecture, and that is uh, you should try. Like you had all this point, you should be it should be fun, it should be human, and I would totally totally check everything, I would add you should be yourself in it, just because for me it doesn't make sense to act if you are teaching. So going to, to an image of your dragon fighter, it doesn't make sense to dress up as a, as a dragon fighter if you're a magician, so you should be yourself because students will notice when you do something that is, that is not you in front of them. Thank you very much. and I'm coming from University of Zagreb, small country, Croatia, who will open the football game tomorrow with Brazil. Yeah. Uh, we are the last uh, in the member club of the EU. We just joined uh, last year, and it was very hard to say, okay, after seven great speeches, what can I add to this uh, stage on the end the end? So last night, after the pub, I changed my presentation and just want to share with you uh, my point of view. I started um, uh, with uh, transfer technology and innovation 20 years ago, and uh, seven years ago I changed the university from small university, mechanical engineering faculty in uh, Slavonia, uh, to big uh, university, 344 years old, completely Humboldt University with uh, structured levels of decision, organization level, teaching, syllabuses, everything in uh, order. So I can tell you that we have teach on the master level, on undergraduate level, on graduate level, that we teach innovation, entrepreneurship, marketing innovation, that we teach research uh, capacity, uh, 
product design, all those subjects that are, are here. I can sign what you said, what the uh, dragon said, but I said, oh no, I would like to be Harry Potter magic. How can I be Harry Potter? Uh, you see, I'm, yes, I'm coming from Zagreb and Nottingham, so one young uh, dem democracy and another one, uh, I, I, I don't need it, uh, and another uh, very old one. So what I uh, would like to see here today, what is the challenge of entrepreneurship education nowadays? What is our impact of that education? So we can teach this, but where is the impact of that? Uh, are we teaching entrepreneurship and innovation for and through? And what kind of academic knowledge do entrepreneurs actually need from us? So I did a survey in another project among 500 uh, small firms and asked them, okay, how you can imply our knowledge in innovation product? And in uh, last week, I did another survey among professors to see uh, how they uh, include open innovation subject in, in or uh, open innovation approach in their subject. And final remarks. Uh, I asked for two minutes because I need this. So please give me additionally two minutes. Uh, so uh, I, I will be very, very quick to see what is the challenge. So that's the way how I started. I'm 54, so in my way, we use the books. And then the change I had happened, and you see, uh, this is the uh, 1925, 89 years ago, and in 1955, the time said that use of transistors in an ordinary radio set is probably still far for. So you need 30 years pass from transistor that it was discovered, then implementation is not even uh, ahead. But then, this is a 34 years ago, and then 20 years ago is a uh, 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 first website, and then this is a mobile phone from Nokia in 1982 uh, to 2002. So, so see how the product changes in 20 years. So can you imagine, whatever you teach your students now, it will be very old in their age. So, how we can prepare them for the uh, uh, future? Because you can't predict future. What we are searching is this uh, shaking uh, boat approach. So uh, some people look at things and say why. I see things that never were and I say why not. And that's what I am trying to do. So I want to uh, 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 change mindset. To really, uh, and this is uh, from the Oxford Dictionary meaning of the mindset. Uh, and then I, I have a friend from a, a school of medicine who said, you can't change the mindset. And then I find that the paper in the nature who said that like sand on the beach, the brains bear some footprints of the decisions we have made and the skills we have learned, the action we have taken. So you can change the mindset. Okay, that's how we teach. We use all of this. Uh, we try to unlock human potential, we try to uh, more, uh, do proactive learning style, we uh, use crea uh, creative problem solving, no boxes, no outside of the boxes, no boxes. <coughs> we also use uh, uh, photography as a learning tool, learning by doing, simulation game, we use a business plan, and so what? What is the impact? Uh, we can see that impact is on skills and attitude, on empathy, on values, on motivation, on process, on uh, competencies, uh, on relationship, and how to start. But it's very well written in uh, some papers written by uh, uh, entrepreneurial school in the UK. So what's about education and training that we can deliver? Are we ready for changes? So this is a sample that I asked a uh, uh, professor just uh, uh, two, three weeks ago. I got 162 responses from all fields, humanities, natural science, uh, uh, bio biomedicine, biotechnical, uh, other sciences, and, and those University of Zagreb, six points, they didn't say from which uh, department uh, they came. So we asked them, uh, we have a, a female 52%, male uh, 48 and I asked them how long do you work at your institution, so we have uh, me, uh, me well, about 15 years, about 40 years, or uh, uh, just half uh, years. So my question was, open innovation is a part of university organization curriculum. In the last year we have made major changes to our curriculum. 
Uh, so uh, uh, from number 130, it's a uh, one to five uh, Likert scale. Uh, uh, the response is 2.8. Our university has a department dedicated to the Industry University Corporation 2008, uh, 2.5. Uh, so it means that we didn't shake the boat enough. Uh, so what we ask, I approached the student. I knew that because I did it, uh, similar studies uh, six years ago. E student organization and we approach proactively from the downs to the bottom and also from the firms and we've made a fund, we uh, organize business plan competition, creative hubs, uh, we invite Toyota to work with our students, they visited now Toyota, they, Toyota covered the, the cost of that. Uh, we implemented uh, 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 open innovation approach in every single subject. I work with uh, a faculty of mechanical engineering, dentist students, uh, uh, school of medicine, and we make a fun, we play, and uh, you see open innovation is a part of university organization. Uh, the proportion of response will agree or strongly agree about that. Uh, you see natural sound, sound, uh, science uh, really uh, uh, in the last three years have made major changes to, to curriculum and they wanted uh, uh, to improve the changes. And another survey that I di uh, did, but I didn't want to, to uh, I will just uh, click, click, uh, quickly uh, pass it. It's a, a Poland sample, a UK sample, and Croatia sample of the small firms. And uh, this is a result of the project simulation learning from idea to the market. So it in the coaching. We asked them what is their learning approach in the small firms, and they said that they like uh, on-job uh, 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 study, self-study, simulation, face-to-face -face skill, and e-learning is not uh, the favorite approach. And what I, I put it here, uh, uh, blue is a sample that is mixed, and then you have every single country, and you see there is no exist a difference between countries. And that's uh, what mostly surprised us. And we asked them what is the importance of education to bring idea to the market. And they asked about uh, leadership, creativity, and innovation. They asked about technology. They uh, asked about in-house communication. And I'm editor-in-chief of uh, International Journal Transition Innovation System. But national innovation system is not interesting to them. Uh, so, uh, uh, I also, we also asked them how they involved research and development in uh, the uh, action and you see academic support re regarding uh, innovation activities, they use in product innovation, government and public research and university in process, uni uh, process innovation, government is, has a negative impact on them and marketing innovation and organization innovation, they use scientific journals, so what we wrote, they use it. It's not without a purpose. So I have just two minutes. Uh, I can I give this to be uh, final remarks. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I'm wise, so I'm changing myself. Mm -hmm. And on the last two minutes, I would like to use the paper that you got. Please write on the paper, Istin and Oinet Love Dublin. OK, please do it, write it. You have uh, 30 minutes to do, and then we will make one fun, I hope, one uh, creativity um, task. And I will be on time. OK? Uh, of East Team and OINEC uh, Love Dublin. OK. So I'm coming from a country th that is very common with Ireland, V, and the UK, and Italy. We share the same sea, Adriatic Sea. So let's do this. Okay, when you wrote it, just put it like that, and we are now be like a ch children in a age of three or four, and then make this, please. Okay, this side, and then again this side. Okay, you have this? Okay, you have it? Please, uh, then just do this. Connect end with end. 
Okay, and you have it now like that. Okay, and repeat it. So I will return. Okay, this in half to be linked with this. Okay, you did it, and then repeat it once more. Like this. Okay, we are here. That my students really love to do. <laughs> Okay, and now we have a sheet. And let's say it together. <laughs> so the Adriatic coast that we share with Italy, from England, it's 41 degrees there. Okay, you have 10 minutes to make T-shirt from the sheet, but please don't touch the shape of the sheet. You have only 10 seconds to do it. Okay, keep the shape and make t-shirt. But you have to keep this shape. I'm not allowing you to, to break it. Actually, you can break it a little bit, but not so much. Okay, I will sail during your thinking. And then during the sailing, unfortunately, I will find a big rock. So the rock will cut the cut my sheep. But I'm very, very um, experienced in a, a captain, so I'm continuing to fly uh, uh, to to um, go on my trip, and then I find another stone, and they damage my sheep again. And see, my ship is not so nice anymore. Oh. oh. But since I'm experienced, I'm trying to exist. But the very big bird eagle came and cut my <coughs> ship again. So please repeat what I did. Okay? So, cut it here, cut it here, and cut it here. Okay? Please keep your papers to be green, and then open it. And we have Istin and Oine Love Dublin uh, t-shirt. Thank you for your attention. I want to be very well gender balanced. Three, four boys, four girls. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the tricks. Um, so um, I know it's ever so difficult because I have 10 minutes and now it would be very difficult for me, but I try to uh, make a recap of what they've been saying and maybe to refresh your questions. Antares from La Quarante University from Finland started with his personal approach. Kessler from Switzerland, she was trying to tell us a little bit of organizing a program. Alberto was telling us his Italian experience from Italy about how to <coughs> work with five universities together. Monica was trying to convince us to change from a teacher more to a mentor, and she was sharing her experience from Lithuania. 
Michael was using a very powerful metaphor from Austria about the track, and I really like that and appreciate that. Sandra from Malta was sh sharing us uh, our experience how to do a field research. Uh, Robin uh, from uh, Aachen University from Germany challenged us all. And um, yeah, I don't think that I still need to re retell you and to recap what uh, Marina was telling you. Whew, I was good, I remembered it all. <laughs> uh, mindset. <laughs> Uh, and so, um, even though we're finished, I guess we, st we could stay a little bit longer. And if any of you could have any questions, so this uh, this is a, a chance for us to really start thinking what we could do. Uh, what I liked about this uh, session, or what presenters did, the whole geogra geography of uh, of our teaching experience, and in terms of the nicely uh, balanced in terms of female male perspective that was one of the targets of the project and so yes it's nice so and i guess we are somewhere but we still have the same challenges and we have something to um, to exchange so i will step back a little bit and give it over to you and to speak with the presenters to to make it a real conversation so anyone who wants to start to make a first comment a question or anything. No, I think what, what we could say is that it, in a way uh, it represented a part of the national culture. We could, we could see from the presentation culture and history. So it could be seen uh, in, in the presentation. Sorry, we are all European, we are all alike, but still we all have um, our background, someone said so. And uh, we, I mean, it was behind what we heard today. According to me. Maybe, uh, <coughs> I, I think you've done very good that uh, we, have, we have heard a uh, different experience. And uh, like uh, what the teller said, we, we should be honest, right? Yeah should be honest also to our uh, students, right? And there are at least two problems which are on top of everything right now. It's uh, one on the map. And, uh, you know, we all build on predictions, on forecast. And where forecasting is difficult, right? Especially in the future. Uh, so maybe this should be focus more. The second uh, is about the finance. Uh, it's, uh, how, it's actually how to put <coughs> uh, uh, Schumpeterian in way together with the finance and tariff planning. And there was not much seen. Uh, even, uh, I like your presentation very much. Uh, and you actually said uh, we, are the, uh, we are getting the students then to uh, stand for them, right? But you know, uh, the role of capital market in uh, Silicon Valley uh, is over everything. <laughs> so it seems that uh, it's not just enough coaching, but more this is this driver approach. These are drivers. It's fine we bring them to learn to fight yeah, in, the, uh, in the place where the fight is really serious. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think over that these are two uh, let's say sickness of present time. We have to introduce more. So I'm actually, um, um, Dennis, you're you're, uh, you're right, uh, especially in the sense that uh, forecasting. Especially when you try to forecast the future, it's, it's, it's really difficult. And, and uh, luckily, in this is again a personal perspective, which which uh, which comes from from uh, from my classroom, is that I I don't expect us to produce uh, like basically mirroring what you said. I don't expect us to produce uh, ready employees. So we're we're not um, teaching uh, students to become. Uh, you know, factory ready, open, open an employee from the package and put them to the company, and they start producing immediately. Rather, it's actually we just uh, we basically cultivate them in a sense that the companies can then um, perfect the product. 
So it's, I, I have no illusions about the fact that we could impart them with all the necessary business skills so that they could be 100% effective from day one. And it's, it's more about um, getting, getting them cultivated to a level which allows them to internalize some of the concepts, to bring something new to the companies, and, and then uh, have the grounds for, for uh, accepting new knowledge on top of it, and, and accepting a new role um, in the company. So I think that's, that's the, so it's essentially it's a mindset, but it's a mindset plus uh, certain uh, type of university granted ability to process knowledge, to, to assimilate things and, and to solve problems. And like creativity. Hmm. I'd like to add one thing. I think it's not about forecasting. Uh, what we were doing was the company, <coughs> which is very different from academia, of course, it was for sighting, which describes different potential futures. And then you go back from these potential futures and say, okay, if this is a viable future, what needs to happen that this future can be created? So I, I strongly agree with you, uh, forecasting, even if most of all, if it's to go into the future, we cannot forecast on data which is from last year. So we are here in the chart of the accountant's house. Um, they are using usually the data from last year for predicting how good the company will be last uh, and in the next year. So I think that the shift is not only from closed innovation to open innovation, but also from forecasting to foresighting and from using models that we are very, very aware of and that we are well educated in. Um, as I showed in my presentation, to models that we do not even understand yet, like design thinking approaches, which are not as easy to handle as uh, approaches that we are using, like good old stage gate processes. No, my point was that's fine, okay, what you present is fine, but in all this, I miss a little bit a kind of self reflection when I come to the turbulence. Okay, and which of the major drivers is actually the math and uh, fund, right? For the for the for the entrepreneur, right? And also for anybody. Right? So when we teach students, uh, we have to involve in our program also that he builds this kind of self reflection. Uh, when it when I come to the trouble, okay, what to do, right? Yes, if you teach them that failure is normal, that be rejected is normal, that you can start again, it's normal. Uh, you know, we are not um, raised our children that failure is good. And if we uh, a judge, that is not good. Who can judge what is a really creative idea, who will change the world, and who cannot judge that? No one can from my perspective. So if we really approach from, from without judgment and without uh, um, prediction that uh, failure is not normal, then they will really open the mindset and uh, creativity and uh, uh, linking <coughs> and networks and uh, working together in dif different disciplines and different countries and, and, and really to, to have uh, feedback on the society and sustainability of this planet. That's what I do believe. I noticed that several of you mentioned failures. And I think we learn more from failures than from success. And so I see Monica says yeah. so, and, and Marina as well. And uh, coming from a uh, well, company as well. I mean, we failed several times, and that's why now we succeeded, something bigger. So, but we, do, we, don't, we don't teach. It's not the European culture. To, to fail and to start from that again. But I just had coming, yeah, I come back to your previous comment. I really enjoyed your previous comment when you said, you know, there are so many perspectives here. And I think that's what is great about European culture. And uh, uh, Europe is great when uh, uh, we take a multilateral approach. You know, we were killing each other 70 years ago. You know, we're not talking about the uh, creating a common classroom of, uh, we are speaking all different languages. I don't think we need, uh, you know, we need to learn from uh, the American business culture, which is, of course, you know, so pervasive in, uh, in, uh, in also in our network. Uh, but uh, I think that's uh, the beauty of uh, being doing this job in 
in Europe and to connect the dots like uh, this network is doing is to share uh, different languages and practices and I think this is really what put us in a competitive advantage uh, with respect to our American colleagues and we don't want to implode uh, in a kind of like meaning like creating bad copies of how do you teach entrepreneurs in, in, in Silicon Valley because this is not Silicon Valley Europe is not a startup nation it will never become a startup nation uh, we are not Israel it's, it's Europe you know so let's just make the best of what we are and, and I think uh, the, the, the orchestra that comes out when our these <coughs> speak together is just something unique in the world. And, uh, so that's really the dream. Just something else, um, two words, just two remarks. Um, to go on with this multicultural aspect, and you included companies as well, and it's not only training students, but I mean to retrain companies. And my second question was, was it on purpose that you left that on the screen? Because I say, that's very good. That's very good and it's exactly, you know, the conclusion of what you presented. So then I can say nothing. my last slide. I can say nothing else, but let's thank uh, uh, our speakers. Christina, who will just navigate us about what's happening next for those especially who are a part of the uh, project. Yeah. Well, first of all, again, thank you very much, especially the presenters for coming here. And <coughs> it was the first time that we tried something like that, but I think we're going to still practice it for the next meetings with probably still different topics, maybe, or um, but still in a very similar team. All in all, um, all in all, probably the best way now, what's, I will just leave my presentation. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so for the OINET partners, <coughs> our meeting is just the beginning, so it will still continue tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So very briefly about the organizational matters. You already know that we started with the Open Innovation Teaching Practice Square, and now it's actually time we could have a very short break until five o'clock, uh, just to refresh our brains and probably this what was done before. You can still continue having discussions with um, with the, our presenters, and from five o'clock we're gonna form here in this room three different round tables, and very. Shortly, I will still ask the Roundtable's facilitator to present their idea as, and what they would like to talk. <coughs> so all of you could pick which Roundtable you would like to uh, participate in. And then, uh, and then meeting is starting, uh, finishes at six o'clock here. And after that, I hope that all of you have access to the internet and all of you have a plan. You can see what's our meeting point in the evening. So we're meeting at 8 uh, o'clock. I have the list of those who registered before. I asked kindly to double check if you're participating or not. If there is still someone who would like to cancel or come for the meeting, just please come to me because I need to have the full <coughs> amount of participants. And tomorrow, please remember that in the morning we are joining the Open Innovation Conference 2.0. I hope all of you registered because that was a separate register registration required. So we are going there. It's 40 minutes walk from this venue. It's just across the river. Uh, we're going to stay there until lunch. And we are coming back here to the same facility by 2 o'clock. And downstairs on the first level, we're gonna have our meeting, which should start, and I hope it will start exactly at two o'clock. You all have the program. The meeting all is supposed to finish at 6.30, and after that, two hours later, we're going to another uh, evening venue. All is in the program. And then for those who are staying in for Friday, uh, we have also take a look at the program 
uh, the venue changes and we are having a room booked in the Juris Inn Custom House that probably most of you are staying so it's even much better uh, for those who doesn't like to walk that much it will be in the same place and then it's supposed to finish at 2 o'clock so very briefly those are the three round tables that are going to sit here uh, also you can see from the program that we have one extra round table which is dedicated for one open innovation call uh, this is something that I hope those of you who are in know about it so you're meeting downstairs in the cafeteria and those are the three round tables that I would very briefly like to ask the facilitator to say a few words about about what actually they would like to discuss about <coughs> it. So please do pay attention now because then you can decide which one table you would like to join. So first is David Rosso. We had the pleasure to actually have one uh, session today in the morning. So I'm a little bit more about his topic, but still for those who doesn't know, David, could you please tell a few words what you would like to talk about in your round table? Yeah, maybe, uh, thank you. First time here for me from Sweden. Uh, Henry and I will try to discuss um, a look at implementation of open innovation at the telecom company and they have some challenges and uh, I have essentially three questions how we can assist as, as uh, academia in, in these processes for implementation of open innovation so it could be interesting to discuss I have more or less three questions that could be interesting to discuss regarding implementation and challenges how, how we can assist as academia. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, David, it will be uh, table round table number one. So, okay. please pay attention to that. Okay. The another round table um, is hosted by JJ from from University.